Hi there, my name is Ben Simmons and in this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to create this Greek temple um, in Blender and render it for cycles. So the first part of the tutorial will cover the modeling and to do that we'll be looking at using instancing and uh, duplicating our various objects multiple times and trying to do that in the most efficient way possible for rendering in cycles so that it instances them correctly and thus renders a lot quicker. And then in the shorter second part we'll look at creating a brief render and uh, how to get that going in cycles. Alright, so um, let's jump straight in and uh, the bit I want to start with is, let's hide my screen recording, is these columns. So obviously you can see that they're all pretty much the same and that's because they are. And um, let's start by making that. So, let's jump to our default view and then Classic delete the default cube. So, after deleting the default cube, I'm going to start by adding a curved circle. And to this, if I jump into edit mode, I'm going to just switch the uh, curve to a 2D curve because I only want to create the cross section of my pillar. And then I'm going to hit subdivide and uh, just in the after the fact options here, change that to 1, 2, 3, 4. Maybe five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to select every second pair of control points around this circle. Uh, because I did a multiple of four subdivisions, I get uh, an even number of pairs. So now that I've got all these selected, uh, I'm just going to scale these into maybe 0.9, so hit S and then 0.9 to constrain that directly. And uh, I'm constraining this on the 3D cursor, so it's all scaling in towards the middle. It would do that with the median point anyway, but it's good just to be sure. So yeah, hit S, 0.9, enter. Now, while I've still got these selected, I'm going to set the handles. Actually, their handles can stay as they are, but I'm going to set them to um, aligned. And that gives the inside ones a nice smooth shape. And if I hit Control I, that inverts my selection. And I'm going to set the handles for these two vector. And that gives nice sharp corners on the outside. Now, vector doesn't always have the nicest interpolation in terms of the length between shapes, so uh, uh, in terms of the geometry between areas. So I'm just going to set that to free in, and that looks exactly the same, but it's going to look a lot nicer when I make it into a mesh. So, um, now all I need to do is set the fill to none. It doesn't do much really. Oh well, I'll just delete the job tree when I make it. Ah, if I choose just a little bit of uh, extrude, I can get rid of that geometry that's in the middle, because I won't want that to create my pillar. And then I'm going to convert this to a mesh, but I'll duplicate it first, so shift D and just move that to layer 0, which I keep as kind of a garbage layer, and then change this other duplicate into a mesh. Now before I do that, I'm just going to set the number of subdivisions of this curve down a bit lower, because this is going to be duplicated a lot of times in my final scene. So, any geometry that I can cut down on a bit is uh, going to be handy. And if I set that down to, I think three, two or three looks pretty good. I'm going to go with three, just so I can still get some decent sharp corners. All right, so I'm going to hit Alt C, convert that to a mesh and just delete one half of that and scale that down on the z-axis so I'm at zero. Alright, now I can start extruding this up to create my pillar. So what I'm going to do is actually make this a block at a time because um, Greek pillars are uh, actually made of sort of stacks of blocks of stone that have been carved into the pillar shape all piled up together and there's a little variation in each one and you know they're all slightly different uh, heights or usually about the same height, but then, you know, it's each car from a different block of stone, so they all look slightly different. So, um, I'm going to extrude that up 
about that far. And then start adding some loop cuts on the top, because now I am going to fill in the top and bottom. So just extrude in, and then extrude in once more, and then I can kind of create some ugly topology in the middle, because that's almost never going to be seen. In fact, I might just cut down on the poly count and leave the middle open. So I do the same for the bottom. And then if I select these two edge loops and just hit space, find the bevel feature. And set that down around 0.1. Maybe I'm just going to undo that. Uh, so that round point two. Need to look at a corner. That looks about right. Okay, so if I set this to smooth, I've now got a rough pillar type shape. I'm just going to add a couple of subdivisions there, and maybe. Uh, just one or two extra ones on the top and bottom, like that. Okay, so now I'm going to start stacking this up to make the full height of my pillar. And every time I do that, I'm just going to add a little bit of rotation. So I set this back to median for my pivot point. And just align these ever so slightly out of whack. And then as I build my pillar up, Introducing a little bit of variation. It's a bit heavy handed so far. Uh, I should be remembering to use Alt D to duplicate these. Because uh, what I want to do is just keep them all using the same mesh data. And then, for example, Just make that bevel a bit softer again, just so I get a gap in between my pillars. And repeat this a few more times. Until I have the height of my pillar. How many Just adding in a bit of variation as well. It's probably a bit much. Making sure to do so from a couple of different angles. much. Alright, I'm going to call that my pillar. Let's just delete our default camera and lamp there from the scene. Keep things simple. Um, I'm just going to shift this up slightly to make room for a bit of a plinth at the bottom. Now to make the plinth at the bottom, I'm going to add a cube and then just scale this down on the z-axis and then hit shift z to scale it uh, on the x and y axes. Again, just to make it a bit smaller. I want to make sure these overlap slightly. If I just select all of those and get it to the right height. Now, to add some beveling to the corners of those blocks at the bottom, I'm just going to add a bevel modifier. And I want to apply the scale to this block because I scaled it down when I added it to make it the right size. But it's important to uh, have an object be the same scale in all dimensions um, if you're going to apply things like bevel modifiers or anything. Because you can see at the moment 
you know, on the uh, x and y axes, if I look from the top, the beveling is quite heavy, but if I look from the side, you can see on the sort of vertical axis that this beveling is really soft, and that's because the, the object has been squashed down. Um, so if I hit apply scale, you can now see that that beveling is even. It's also way too big. So if I just tone this down a bit, um, by clicking and dragging on the width, if you hold shift as you uh, click and drag, you get finer control. So I'm going to set it to about there. That looks good. Maybe you just scale it up a bit again and apply that scale so my beveling doesn't get affected. And then let's be lazy and just add the same at the top. Okay. What's this lacking? I think I want to add a bit of a circular thing, a ring at the bottom and the top. So if I snap my cursor to that location, and I'm going to add a torus. And the options here, just adjust that. So take the minor radius down, and the major, major radius down a bit. That looks about right. Shift that down. You can also use Alt S, uh, the shrink and fan tool to make a torus sort of skinnier. Scale that up a bit to make some room. That looks good. And then what I'm going to do is just Alt select those two edge loops that run around just inside of the middle of the torus. And that lets me delete the inside faces and then extrude in from there to create my uh, sort of circular base there. And if I hit Alt B and duplicate that and move it up to the top, and it's scaling up a bit. Cool. And finally, what I want to do is merge all these pillar objects into one, excluding the top and bottom, and just add some tapering to the pillar, because at the moment it's uh, straight up and down. And what I want is for there to be some tapering off at the bottom and the top, to make it sort of bulge ever so slightly in the middle. So if I turn on proportional editing, and set the fall off type to sharp, I can hit S, Shift Z, and that lets me scale it on the X, uh, just the X and Y axes and then increase my radius a bit with the mouse wheel and take the scale down ever so slightly on the top and on the bottom even more slightly and also with a slightly smaller radius maybe just that much and then adjust the side of the pillar at the top as well there we go, I think that will do for my pillar so now what I want to do is just lump this all together into one mesh that I can then duplicate over and over to make my temple. So to do that, I select the whole bunch, just lasso select around it, hold down control and drag with the mouse. And then I hit Alt C, mesh from curve meta surf text. And that will convert the whole thing, applying all the modifiers into meshes. They're all set at once still at the moment. And then if I hit select them all again, and just select that bottom one last, so that's the active object, because that's the one with the uh, center that I want to use, and hit Control J to join them all into one mesh. There we go. That's our pillar. Now, time to make a temple from it. So to do this, we're going to be using, let's just save my file. So now what we want to do is start duplicating this column and turning it into our temple. And this is going to form the main sort of interesting element of the temple. So it's going to be duplicated a lot of times. 
And uh, to start duplicating this, what I'm going to use is duplicate faces. And what this does is it creates a duplicate using a mesh, and for every face in that mesh, it creates another instance of that uh, object you're using, in our case, the column. And this has two advantages. One, you can use the size of the face as the input for the size of the duplicate, so you can have duplicates of different sizes. And two, it will use the orientation of the face, it's normal, the direction it's pointing, uh, to determine the rotation of the object. So it's far more versatile than duplicate verts, which is another way of duplicating things uh, that will just create uh, duplicates of the same size and rotation at every vertices. So uh, it's, uh, it's much more functional in that terms. And also, um, what's relevant to cycles is that when you duplicate something with duplicate faces, or duplicate verts for that matter, or particle systems, or that's what I can think of at the moment, uh, you create a proper instance, a, uh, an instance of the object that is exactly the same to every other one. And that's really important when it comes to rendering because that speeds up Blender a lot when it's building the scene for rendering and rendering the scene. Uh, because Blender has to keep a lot of less geometry in mind, in mind, in memory, uh, because it will know that every single instance of that object is the same. So it keeps the memory requirements down and makes your render faster, which is great. So that's another reason to use stupid faces. So, to start with this, I'm going to add a new plane at the origin. So just hit Alt G. And then parent my pillar to the plane. And if I now turn on duplicate faces, I will get a duplicate of the object at that point. And you can see it's picked up on the fact that this has been rotated slowly. And uh, it's created a sort of double instance of my pillar. But that doesn't matter because we're actually going to be moving this away from the origin plane itself by jumping into edit mode and let's just rotate that probably 90 degrees there we go and then moving that out and I'm just going to turn on snapping to grid so hit the magnet icon and then I can move this and I'll snap to the grid and I'll turn off proportional editing for now because I don't need that and you can see I've now got my oops my upside down apparently uh, column so the reason it's upside down is presumably because the normals are pointing in the wrong direction so if I hit flip normal my column will flip the right way up there we go and then I'm just going to set up bow duplicating that plane over and over by the same amount. So six units on the y-axis. And if I do that once, I can hit Shift R and repeat that as many times as I like. Because I don't accidentally press any other buttons. So there we go. So if I make my temple that many units deep. And is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Eight columns deep, that will do. And then duplicate that across to. Well, let's find out how many columns across I want to do. So I'm going to move it the same amount on the x axis. So six units. And if I make six columns across, that should do it, and then I can just box select these columns, shift them to the other side, I wasn't trusting myself there, those didn't look like they were lined up, I just had to draw a line with a grease pencil, and do the same ignoring that one for the columns at the front of the temple. And the reason that I'm not putting a plane here is that my original mesh is providing a uh, not a duplicate but 
the original itself in that location, so I don't need to put a plane there to create a column. Um, so, I have my very vague outline of my temple here. Now I need to start adding some foundations, I need to add a roof, and uh, maybe something in the middle. So, let's begin by adding a floor to our temple. And to do that, let's put my cursor at the middle of our floor plan. So if I select two corners and hit cursor to select it, and just make sure that's snapped to the grid as well, which it is, and add a plane. And scale this up until it goes just outside the pillars, maybe about there. And if I hit snap selection to grid, jump into edit mode. I can then set out my first layer of the floor. Now I'm just going to extrude that down and then duplicate it and move that duplicate down and then if I hit shift H I can isolate that bit of my selection on its own and hide the rest I'm just going to move that another unit out in each direction to create a step. And hitting Alt H to bring that back it gives me my temple with a floor. And once again, I'm going to apply my scale to that because I want to add a bevel modifier and set the width of that to 0.05, that looks about right. And all in the spirit of duplication, I'm going to hit Alt D and flip that over, rotate it 180 degrees and Bob's your uncle, what do you know there's a ceiling? Uh, but I think actually for my roof what I'll do is make that into a unique object just by going into the mesh data in the number making it single user and this time I'm going to shift that second layer in again and the same from that view Oops. There we go. And then duplicate that top bit. Or make a top bit by duplicating the bottom bit. There we go. So now we're starting to get some of our temple. So the next step will be to create the little architectural details that I get in here. Let's draw them in with the, the uh, grease pencil. And I forget the uh, interesting architectural name for these, you'll have to forgive me, uh, but they're generally found above each pillar and that makes me think of something because also I've got a duplicate for each pillar and I could be duplicating the, these little details in the same way and in fact I've already got each pillar placed uh, exactly below where these details will need to go. So if I were to jump into edit mode with my pillar and then say add a cube and then shift that up and then scale it down on one axis slightly and then align this then pretty instantly I've got my detail and at the moment that's only repeating on one side of the building all I have to do to make that repeat over and over to make sure that each side of the pillar 
has one of those little groups of blocks. So if I rotate and duplicate that around the center of the pillar, and now my whole temple has them. And that was all nice and quick. I'm just going to move those in a bit. Uh, and by using shrink fatten, I've also sort of fattened them up a bit on the inside. And then bevel them slightly using the tool in edit mode again this time. And set that to, let's see, 0.2. And that looks about the right size. And then because these faces on the top and the bottom don't get seen, there's no sense having them to contribute to that poly count in my scene. So I'm just going to delete them and then tidy up a bit. So there we go. We've added some details around the tops of our pillars. So next thing to do would be to add our inside to the temple. So I'm going to add another cube and this is going to be really simple because it's not going to receive all that much attention. Uh, it's going to be comparatively sort of hidden away. Just snap that to the grid. Go back to using median point as my pivot point for scaling. And I'm going to turn snapping back on. And just adjust the size of this cube. So that fills the area I want my uh, central area of my temple to cover. And then grab that, move it up until we fill the space. Cool. And then I need to cut a door in here. So I hit Control R to add some loop cuts and two. So then I get two of them. And then scale this down on the x axis a bit to make. Cuts my door a bit narrower. Let's keep things snapped to the grid because it makes things easier for now. And now I've got a hole for my door. And just briefly here, I'm going to delete the base of that cube because I don't need to have a uh, separate floor to my temple or anything. And then extrude back a door. And again, just delete the face on the bottom there, because that's not required. And I'm just going to shift those vertices down so that they clip through the floor. Make sure there's no seams or anything at the edges where the two meet. And then delete that face there. Now, I'm not going to spend any time in this tutorial making the inside of my temple. Um, this is something that's going to be rendered from the outside, so. If I just hit uh, slash the number pad, you can see that I'm basically going to leave this like this. All I'm going to do is add in a bevel modifier. You should be getting used to this by now. Delete those top faces as well. And maybe set that to 0.05. And and hit apply on that. <coughs> that will do. Go back to my global view. And then to make this more interesting, I think I want to duplicate some more pillars just around the uh, outside of the temple doors maybe, the front. And if I shift those on the side to the corner. How does that look? It's okay, but a bit out of line with uh, the other pillars. So let's just select all those. Shift them back one so they're in line. And then select those faces. And shift them back a bit so they're in line. And there we go. We've got our temple entrance done. Uh, next we want to add a roof. So let's just uh, think about how, I have, how high we want this roof to be. 
So I'm just going to sketch in with the grease pencil the height of my temple roof. And then if I add a new cube at the origin, shift it to the center of my temple. And if I just get back that grease pencil sketch that I did by choosing it in the uh, properties region here. And I'm going to turn off snapping again because I now need to make a rough triangle. Cool. Usually, at the front of a temple like this, I guess you'd see a uh, frieze or a uh, some statues or something, like the Elgin marbles of the Parthenon, except, uh, yeah, Britain stole them. Sorry, Greece. But we're going to leave our temple a bit more bare, just to keep the tutorial short. A great big another tutorial on the sculpting statues and things otherwise. And then I'm going to add some blocks for the roof. You'll notice a theme of having extremely simple geometry here. But uh, by combining our simple geometry with some clever duplication and things, we can actually create quite a complex looking scene. So I'm just uh, setting my cursor to the middle of this side of the roof just by selecting the uh, faces at the beginning and end and then snapping that block to it. Just scale that up on the y-axis to there. And down on the x-axis a bit because it's got a bit big to there. Shift it up slightly. There we go. That's one side of the roof. And then if I snap my cursor back to that and hit Alt D, Control M, X. Oops. About the cursor. Get one on the other side. Uh, that rotation hasn't carried over correctly. Uh, all I need to do there is just rotate it back the other way. There we go. It doesn't need to be 100% accurate. And let's add one more block along the top to form a sort of central stone beam. Thing. Let's get it down slightly on that axis. And then extrude out from those sides. If you uh, cancel your extrude with right click, so not cancel it but don't move the resulting faces anywhere, if you hit Alt S you can then sort of fatten out at perfect right angles, which is usually quite useful for modeling. And just create a bit of a lip there. Take that down a bit just by scaling. And uh, now these start and end bits, because they're only basically faces, in fact they really only need to be faces, so I can delete the back in front of them. But I'll part that top bit from the rest of the object that I created there, and just add a bevel modifier to the top bit.
a slight one. And if I join those other roof pieces with it, I can bevel them slightly as well. Might be slightly unnecessary because what we're going to do now is start adding some tiles to the roof. And once again, to do that, we're going to use duplicates. So let's just uh, jump to layer two and build our tile object. So uh, I'm going to get rid of that grease pencil sketch that was going on there. Say goodbye to it. And add a new cube. And from this, I'm going to make a very, very simple tile. Now, roof tiles of the overlapping sort often have this sort of sideways S shape that allows one to overlap with the next one in a neat sort of curve. So I'm going to create that sort of a shape just in a really low poly fashion. nice way to do that is just to hit Alt-D, duplicate it once along the x-axis, and then you can instantly see how the next one will join up. That seems reasonably nice. And if I some control loops. I'm not sure I want to subdivide this actually, I'm going to just give it a bit of a bevel. So let's get rid of those control loops. And just use edge select to select the start and end here. And bevel those bits. You can see once again quite the bevel I want vertically. So I'll just shift those up and down a bit manually. Oops, I'll do that, whatever that was. But uh, I want to keep the uh, geometry for this tile extremely simple because it's going to get repeated a lot in just a minute. So that's probably good enough. If I delete my other duplicate now, and I need to create a mesh that I can then duplicate this tile with. So, to do that, I'm going to take these two faces that I created for my roof, select those, Shift D, duplicate them, and part them from the mesh. And then if I move this to layer 2, and view layer 2 on its own, now I've just got my tile and these two planes. And then, once again, we'll be using duplicate faces. So I'm going to parent my tile to the roof, and then for the roof, turn on duplicate faces. Now, at the moment, it's looking like hmm, this is all in the wrong place. Well, that's very simple to solve. All you need to do is apply the location on the faces on that roof mesh. And that sets the origin to the world origin down here, which is coincidentally where I have my tile. So now my tile appears on the roof where it should. So now I need to repeat this tile over the roof. And to do that, because I'm using duplicate faces, is very simple. I can just subdivide and subdivide. And then I'm getting kind of rectangular faces here. So what I want to do is just select these edges, subdivide, oops, and you guessed it, subdivide, and subdivide again, and now it looks like my tiles are starting to overlap. In fact, it's looking like they're overlapping a bit much, uh, and to solve that, we have the scale setting on the faces, so if I turn on scale, and then I can use this inherent scale amount to make them a little bit smaller. Take them down to there, that's about what we need. Cool. Now you'll see at the moment that uh, I also need to make them overlap horizontally or uh, sort of up this 
um, up the slope of the roof. So to do that, I'm just going to jump into edit mode again, add a slight bit of rotation. And now my tiles overlap. And the only awkward thing that I can see here is that they're overlapping one way on one side of the roof and the other way on the other side of the roof, which is ideal. So to fix that, I'm just going to delete the side of the roof that isn't working as I want. And instead, duplicate it from the side that I do like. And create a second tile object and parent it to that side. And make sure that it's in the right location. So the origin of the two objects has got to be the same if you want the geometry to appear in the right place. And now those overlap correctly. So if I bring back my layer one, I've now got a whole bunch of roof tiles on my roof. And that's looking pretty nifty. Except that they're all aligned kind of perfectly. Which, uh, you know, great job to uh, whatever Tyler made that temple roof. But realistically, we want it to look a bit more varied. And that's actually really easy to, comp to accomplish. To do that, all we really have to do is go into face select mode, or actually, let's select vertices, and select one vertex uh, from roughly in the middle of our object, of the roof. And then if I hit O to turn on proportional editing, and set the fall off on that to random, and then just turn up the radius, See when I pull up, I can basically add some randomization to my roof tiles. And obviously, I need to keep this very slight. So if I just go 0.02, that's not enough. 0.1, almost enough. 0.5, a bit too much. 0.2, that's about the right level of variation, I feel. Maybe 0.3, just add another 0.1 to that. Now you can see these tiles have gotten a bit of variation to them. They're all uh, going to reflect light at slightly different angles when we render. And uh, that's looking good. Cool. So, let's enable all our layers again and have a look at our temple. And uh, I'm going to sort of start drawing things to a close here. And the only thing I can really see that it needs is a floor at the moment. So, if I create a new plane and just add enough of a floor for the sake of doing a render in the second part of this tutorial. Cool. So that's the uh, modeling of our uh, little temple complete just about. Um, I might just add a little step because these stone blocks are looking pretty big. So, for people to get into our huge temple here, I might help them out just to uh, add a couple of steps. So, line that up with the entrance to the temple. Make that a little bit bigger. Oops, don't want my random proportional editing on it anymore. Just lengthen that out a bit. There we go. If I join that, control J, with the rest of my uh, temple floor, then that instantly gets the same modifier, so it'll get beveled. That's looking pretty okay. So we've got some steps there. Alright, I think I'm going to call it a day at that point, and uh, in the next part of the tutorial we'll look at um, setting up a basic render in cycles and taking advantage of the fact that uh, we've set this up in a way that works great with instancing, so we should get some nice fast renders in cycles in the second part of this tutorial. Okay, uh, I hope this has been useful and I'll see you for the second part soon. Thanks very much.